In today's video, we're going to look at how to add some CSS to our sidebar to make it look a little better. We're also going to clean up our script just a little bit. Uh, so right now we have everything on one page. And you know, we could add our CSS at the top here, uh, but then it's just it gets really hard to look through. So let's separate what we have. Um, let's move our JavaScript and our CSS to separate HTML files. Um, so first we'll create it. We'll just call it JS for JavaScript. And CSS. Great. And you'll see it just creates the templated HTML, but we'll get to that in a second. And let's go ahead. I'm going to copy all of everything within the script tags plus the script tags. Move them here, select all, delete it, and paste all of our JavaScript that we have. Oh, and we have some stuff we're not using yet. All right, so let's start with that. We'll get to the CSS in a minute, but let's pull our JavaScript back into here. And we do that with this built-in Google Apps Script function. And as you've seen, we, we showed previously how we can use this to pull a value in from the template. Um, but we can also use this same call to call a function. So not just the value that we passed in when we were creating, um, but we can also call a function. Um, and the function we want to call is one to get this script here and to put it here. Uh, we're going to call that function include. So now we need a function called include. All right, and what this is going to return is the contents from the JavaScript page. So we need to call the HTML service. And we are going to, uh, let me see here. So we'll create HTML output from the file. Our file name that we want to create from is JS. We need to get content. Awesome. All right. So this is going to get all of the text content here. And it basically just gets it as a string. Uh, the big difference here, you'll notice that there is an exclamation point here versus no exclamation point here. Without the exclamation point, this just gets processed as a string. When we add, add the exclamation point, Google Apps or App Script here knows to process this as HTML or JavaScript or you know actual markup here. Um, so if I were to leave this off, well, so let's leave it off for a minute and have a look just so you can see what that does. So let's show our sidebar. And you'll see we get all of our script right there. Now what we're looking for. But when we add that exclamation point, save it, run it. Now we, oh, actually it looks like it's not working properly because it's not pulling our initial input value. So let's have a look. Oh, um, yeah, let's see here. Well, let's inspect this, do some troubleshooting for you. Hopefully this won't make the video too long, but we want to find out. Doesn't like the token. Oh, because we can't call this in here anymore. This initial value has to stay, or rather this call within um, these tags here, the question marks, 
can't be called over here now. They all have to be on the main page. So we are going to, uh, we'll leave them down here. All right. Now let's give that a try. Load. Awesome. Working just fine. If we get value, we should get three here. Yep. Awesome. So it is successfully pulling in all of the script that we had here. Um, so now we've tidied up our HTML quite a bit. It's easier to look at, easier to read through. Uh, same thing with JavaScript. Now we just have the JavaScript to look at. So now let's add some CSS. Before we can do that, we need to, uh, well actually, we need to make our include a little more robust because we want to tell it which pages to look at. So here I want it to open the JavaScript, but up here I want to use the same function, but I want it to open CSS. So the way we need to do that, now we're passing an argument through, a string argument. We're going to call it page, and we can just replace this with our new argument. All right, so now if we want to add some simple CSS, um, let's let's mess with our buttons. Before we can do that, let's give our buttons a class so we can do the same, give them all the same behavior. Oops. All right. Now we'll call this class. And if you're new to CSS, uh, this little dot before the BTN means that it's a class. If it was an ID, we'd do a ha hashtag. If it was a tag, like it was a div or um, h1 or whatever, we would just leave it like this and go div or h1. But again, if you're new to CSS, there you go. Also, if you're new to CSS, this is really not the tutorial for you. You should look somewhere else <laughs> to learn CSS. All right, so let's change the background color, call it blue, and we'll make the font white. Then we will do, if you hover over the button, change the color back to white and we'll make the font black. All right, let's save, run, and you'll see we have blue buttons and when you hover over them, they turn white. Awesome. Last little tidbit here. Uh, you can also call in JavaScript and CSS library. So you could have a jQuery library. Um, and I'll show you a quick example of the CSS library. So we'll use materialize because it's pretty straightforward and easy. And in order to get started with these libraries, you have to have a library that has a CDN here. Uh, and there's different ways to get them. Not everybody has them but it's generally pretty simple. Um, the basics of what's happening here, uh, it took me, and the only reason why I'm going over this is because I, when I first started learning this, it took me a minute to really understand what's happening, but we're gonna take this link, we're going to put our index and paste it here. We're going to take this link, and we need CSS gets loaded first before we load our page. JavaScript should typically get loaded last. And always there's exceptions to every rule. We'll put it down there. 
Uh, and what's happening here with these links, just to explain that, is you'll notice there are URLs here. And if you were to go to this URL, you're going to see a whole lot of CSS. Um, a whole lot. And what it's doing is it's going to this website, and instead of you have it, you could just select all of this, copy it, and put it into a page here and do just what we've done here, just to paste it within this style tag if you wanted to. But instead of cluttering up our project here, we are telling it to go to this site, get all of this, and input it right here. So that's what's happening on basic level. Same thing with JavaScript, the JavaScript library. We can go here and it's just going to be a crazy amount of minified JavaScript. And you'll see this is we, we don't want to try to copy and paste this into our project because we're just not going to do that. All right, so now we have that. And if you were going to use this, you'd go through and you can look at their different components. Um, uh, for example, we have an input box, so we're going to have a form, look at text inputs, and something that you're not going to see right off, it's not super obvious, is we actually need this. And this says, hey, you're using an input box, make sure it updates and works properly, so we're going to put that right there. Awesome, run our sidebar and see how it looks right now. It is going to update it to match the fields um, or to look more like the uh, CSS library that we just called. So you'll see our input box looks a little different, our header looks a little different, our buttons all look a little different, it all looks and reacts just a little bit different. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the uses of it, but that's just the basic functionality. Uh, and as you can see, it's all works just fine. And that is all for this tutorial. If you have any other ideas for tu tutorials or want to learn how to do something else, uh, please leave a comment and let me know. Uh, and like this page. Thanks.